This is John Cressman with MonkeyUncle.com. This is our Game Salad platformer tutorial, and we're on episode 11. If you have not been following along, you might want to download the project file from MonkeyUncle.com in our template section. If you have been following along, your template should be where we're at now uh, after episode 10. So the first thing I want you to do is do a file save as and we're going to call this platformer tutorial 011 today we're going to be talking about setting up checkpoints and that means that at a certain point your player will no longer spawn back at his original point but spawn someplace else during in your game so for instance right now we have a level similar to this if you've been going along with this your level could look however you created it but what we're going to do is we're actually going to create we're going to move our deadly objects further down the screen I'm going to put them right about here so now if the player touches these as you know he will die and what would happen is he would spawn all the way back at the beginning which is where we set him to spawn but we don't want to do that what we want to do is if he makes it a certain distance we want him to respawn here so what we're going to do is we already have a spawn X and a spawn Y so that's where he's going to spawn we need to be able to set that based on when he come in contact with a certain object so what we're going to do is we're going to come under actors and you can go home and actors we can create two new actors we're going to call the first one checkpoint and now this can we're not really actually going to set a uh, graphic yet now the second one we may be using later so we're just going to leave it there set as actor 2 for now so, so go ahead and open up the checkpoint actor we're going to come under physics and set the density friction and bounciness to 0 and click on fixed rotation now movable we're going to click the faults now we're going to use a graphic from our platformer set now if you come under items under platformer which hopefully you downloaded if not you can get it from Kenny K E N N E Y dot N L you can choose any of the flags I'm just gonna happen to choose the yellow flag I'm gonna drag the yellow flag one over I'm gonna go down to images I'm gonna drag those other yellow image flags so flag two and flag down okay so as you can see we have three flag images the first two are for animating the second one is if he touches it we want to show him that he's passed this checkpoint so we're going to change it to this graphic so in order to do the animation we're going to come under behaviors we're going to choose an animate behavior we're going to drag it over I'm going to click off restore actor when image because we just wanted to cycle between two images and then just drag the two yellow flag images over that actually have the flag up we're going to leave it at 10 frames per second so these two images will cycle five times in one second which should be fine now what we have to do is do something when we touch the player so when the player touches this object we want it to do something what we want it to do we're gonna go ahead and create a rule and we're gonna say when the actor overlap or collides with actor of type player so we'll rename this to touches player we're gonna do a couple things okay first of all we're going to create a new attribute and this new attribute is going to be a boolean and we're just going to name it 
touched. We'll leave it false for now. Now that means that they've touched it. And we can set that value here. So let's go under behaviors and change attribute. And we're going to change checkpoint touched to true. We're also going to change two other attributes. The first attribute is game spawn x and game spawn y. Now we could set these to values right here. We could set it to say, you know, 300 and 600. But that means every time we place one of these checkpoints, we would have to manually go in and edit this. And we don't want to do that. So what we do is we're going to create two more attributes. We're going to call these real attributes, make these real attributes. The first one is going to be called spawn x. The second one will be called spawn y. So we'll set these values in the instance, just like we have with the elevators. So if we come over here, we're going to set game spawn x to checkpoint spawn x. So the player's next spawn x will be equal to whatever this checkpoint x is. And now, same thing with the y coordinate, we're going to set it to checkpoint spawn y. Now we've set touch to true and we need to change this actor to show the player that it's been touched. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to create a new rule and we're actually going to place it up here at the top. And we're going to say when attribute checkpoint touched is false, meaning they have not touched it yet, we're going to drag this animation routine behavior up into this rule. And we'll call this touched or not touched. Now, if it's false, meaning the player hasn't touched it, we're going to play this animation. However, if they have touched it, we don't want to play that animation. Instead, we want to actually change the graphic to this flag down. So now when it's touched, okay, we're going to change the spawn x and spawn y, and then we're going to set this touch equals true. And when that happens, it's going to stop playing the animation because it'll now be true, and instead it will choose this image. So let's file save. Let's go ahead and go into our scene. We're going to take this checkpoint graphic image and we're going to move it over to the top where the player spawns. Okay, this player should spawn right about here. So we're just going to test it out just by placing it here. So let's do that now. And of course, he's touching it and immediately it shows up. So that's not quite what we wanted. So instead, let's go into player. Now this deadly in objects is one of the way he dies. And now if you look here at this spawn actor, we're spawning the dead player. And when the dead player, let's go over to the dead player, when the dead player finishes doing its thing, then what we do is we spawn this player actor at spawn X and spawn Y. So in the beginning, the first time it comes through, let's go back in the scene, click on attributes, and these are game attributes. So if we come down, this is where we're going to spawn. Now this X is 150, which is this way. So let's change this X to 100. All right, and this is where he first spawns. So we're going to 
move him over here. Now notice that it's fly, flapping. He's moving and now we move over and we touch it and the flag comes down. Now I spawned over here the first time. So let's see what happens if I get killed. Nope, now I died. And it didn't spawn anywhere. Now what it actually happened is it did spawn, but it spawned at zero zero, which is actually probably down here. So the way we do the way we set the checkpoint spawn points is by setting this spawn X and spawn Y. So let's go back into scene. And now we're going to go into attributes. All right, so let's click on this flag. We're going to double click on him. And we're going to look at his position. Now there's his position. And here's the spawn X and spawn Y. So we're going to use the spawn X, which we're going to say is 283. And for spawn Y, we're going to take this number and we want him to spawn a little bit above so he kind of drops down. So let's choose let's choose 700. Okay. So now we've set the new spawn coordinates and let's see if he takes these. So he spawns here. I'm going to hop down. I'm going to jump over the invulnerability. And as you can see, he spawned all the way over here. Not that much of a difference, obviously. So let's move this over here. Set it up. All right. So now we moved it all the way over there, and let's test it out. I'm going to hop down. I'm going to go invulnerable. I'm on the elevator. I'm hopping off. And as you can see, flag's not over here. Now, if you've been following along, you probably guessed what had happened. So if we go into scenes and scene layers, the checkpoint flag got put in the HUD, which is this part that doesn't scroll, like this the controls and the score. So now when we try it, I'm going to hop down and grab this invulnerable so I can go past the B. There's the flag. I'm going to touch it, and now it's down. Now watch. I'm going to die, and I got respawned back over here. Now why did it happen that way? Well, it's because we moved the flag, but we never reset the coordinates. So always remember, you're looking at the instance of the checkpoint flag. So now that we're over here, double click on it. Now here's the new X coordinate, here's the new Y coordinate, so change the Y, just add 50 to it, so we're going to say 391, and the X coordinate, we're just going to leave it 1350, 1350. So now, we go over, we hop on the elevator, we move over, now we jump on the flag. Now we remember we just reset this XY spawn coordinate. So when I hop down this time, I die, but I respawn right there at the checkpoint. And you can set up a number of different checkpoints, and I'll show you what you can do there. We're going to actually go into scene. Now what I would do is probably have a different color flag for each checkpoint, but you don't have to. I'm going to take another checkpoint. And I'm going to put it right over here. And then let's move this dangerous object a little further so you can actually hop down. Put it right here. I'm going to double click on it because remember we have to set the spawn coordinates. So this one, X, we're going to add 50 so he does that little drop. 161 and 19. 17. 
So now we've set those coordinates. We're going to preview it again. Hop down, grab the invulnerability, run past the bee. Now we're going to set, that's a new spawn point, so I'm going to come down. I'm going to die. Oh, I just saw something. Once again, it looks like, yep, this checkpoint got thrown into the HUD. So let's try that one more time. Uh, vulnerable, hop on the elevator, run over. Here's our first checkpoint. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to die. I respawned at the first checkpoint. I'm going to hop down. I'm going to touch our second checkpoint. I'm going to run over here and die. And I respawn at the second checkpoint. So you can see you could have a huge level and have multiple checkpoints throughout the level. And if they get to a certain point, they don't have to repeat the entire first part of the level. Instead, they can just pretty much start over where they left off. And that's it for episode 11. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, stay tuned for more episodes. And you can catch us on monkeyuncle.com. Um.